I know French food has the reputation of being a bit posh, but actually there are all kinds of recipes that use really inexpensive ingredients. Peasant food, basically. And I love peasant food. I'm making a luxuriously cloudy souffléed spinach omelette, sheet-thin rustic buckwheat galettes with all sorts of fillings, a rich and earthy lentil soup with hot chorizo croutes, and lovely baked onions with herb vinaigrette. A lucky penny! Never let being broke get between you and your appetite. If you're broke or not, frankly, you should always be economical in the kitchen. It's only ethical. My little piggy. I'm saving up. He's special. Eggs are one of the most economical things you can buy. And anyway, I think we eat way too much meat. And it's good to have a lighter dinner every once in a while and cheaper. I'm making a spinach omelet, a souffléed omelet, which is very luxurious. So even though it's just simple eggs, you get this magnificent thing all puffed up and stuffed with spinach and cheese. This is a pound of spinach. I'm just going to give it a quick rinse. Da, da, do. Da, da, do. Da, da, do. Spinach, you steam it. Four eggs. Because I'm a hungry girl. And then it has wilted down to nothing. And rinse it in cold water just so it stays nice and pretty green. Because you can't have any water in it, squeeze it out. You just make it like a puppet head. Squeeze. And then just chop it because otherwise you'll get these big chunks in your mouth. So eggs are the base, but otherwise cheese is going in, a shallot, just a little bit of butter, just enough to fry the shallot. Once the shallot is softened, you can put the spinach in. Now, a lot of egg dishes and creamy dishes use uh, a bit of nutmeg. You don't want to overdo it because you, you don't want it to taste like uh, dessert, like eggnog. But a little bit is very nice, traditional. And I just love grating it, too. Very romantic. I'm going to warm this water up. And now the fun part. You need two whisks. The big whisk for the whites because they'll whip faster. And this one for the yolks. Now, I'm just gonna set it over hot water. You don't have to do this, but if you do, it just makes them higher and lighter. Okay, see that? Thick, almost mayonnaise-like. That's ready now. They just get so cloudy and shiny. So you have the sun and the clouds. Okay, so just a little pile of cheese first. I'm gonna use Parmesan. Okay, some of the whites into the yolks just to match the textures a bit. And so I don't use any volume. Spatula. and then fold just by drawing through and flipping over. Okay, now, to cook it. This is a no-stick pan, but what's an omelet without butter? And then in go the, oops. More salt and pepper. 
you want to speed up, you can just cover it for a bit. Pack. Can't let it go too far on you. And then scatter over the spinach. All out over top and then cheese over that. There's no point making beautiful food if you're going to have an ugly plate, so pick a nice one. And now, to see if I can do this. It pulls away from the sides, see that? It's nice and golden underneath. Just at the halfway mark, you can whoop, flip it over. Cloudy. It's like the grass and the clouds and the sun all in one. Since I'm in frying mode, this reminds me of another French dish, except it stays much flatter. Crepes with all kinds of fillings. Paris is actually a great city if you're broke. When I was a freelancer living with my roommate Camille, we did tons of stuff and it cost nothing. <laughs> After an hour, I'm going to die. Well, necessity is the mother of invention, which is a good thing. I think it's a good thing sometimes not to have too much of anything because it makes you much more creative. I'm making buckwheat crepes, which are a Breton thing, but I'm using a very light buckwheat flour and mixing it with whole wheat, because that's very healthy. So, I'm just going to use half of each kind of flour. Now, sometimes buckwheat flour can be heavy, and that's why it can be good to mix it up with other flours. You can use white, too. So that's half whole wheat. Okay, those are the flours. You want salt. Half a teaspoon, say. Just making a little well in the middle. And then crack in three eggs. So that's two cups of flour and three eggs. Just a bit of oil for fat. You don't want olive oil because you don't want that taste in here. Just a plain oil. Add at least a cup of buttermilk. Buttermilk will give it a nice mature taste because it's got that kind of fermented edge to it. And then just keep adding to thin it out. It should be the consistency of thin cream. And then if you need more liquid, you could add more water or more milk, whichever one you want. Okay, I think to me that's rich enough with that much milk, so I might just add a little water. Yeah, I'm not overdoing it, just, uh, just a dribble. You can thin it out later. It will thicken up as it sits. Now, fillings. I'm making a tomato filling because that's what my grandmother always did. Except she didn't do it quite as luxuriously as I'm about to. What you need... Okay. Just trust me on this. It's tomatoes, and tomatoes are a fruit, so I know people always think tomatoes go with olive oil, but because they're so acidic, they're actually better sometimes with butter and cream. Just... So I'm heating this pan, and then melt just a little bit of butter, and then cut the tomatoes right through the waist. Tomatoes in, cut side down. And then you just have to poke their butts. Puck, puck, puck. Because they have thin skin, so like with sausages or apples in the oven, they'll burst. And this is going to help them not burst. I'd say 10 minutes on that side. And I'll get some time. So, flip the tomatoes upright. Whoop. 
but they still hold their shape. They're not tomato sauce. They look like a nice side dish. Salt and pepper. And just enough cream. You just want it caramelized and cooked down. And the thyme. So I'm just gonna leave these for about 10 minutes. Meanwhile, you can fry crepes. This is clarified butter, and I'm using that because it's just the butter fat, and it's pure, so it can't burn. Now, know that even the best crepe makers give the first crepe to the dog, because they never work. It's always the trial run. Way too thick. Okay, so here's the disaster crepe. Goodbye! Actually, this is looking a little too porridgey for my comfort. So, once again, add a little water, because you want it thin, as thin as cream. This is just a little thinner, so it should spread even better. Look at that, just perfect. Just move it around quickly. They're very good for confidence because they just get better and better as you go. Pick up a crepe to your plate. Just scoop out some tomatoes beside it. It looks very cheerful. Mm. Another humble recipe is soup. I have one for lentil soup that's really cheap, but it tastes like a million bucks. I'm making all French food that doesn't cost too much. And my greatest bargain yet is lentil soup, which is thick and earthy and really filling and satisfying. And the little perk on top is tiny chorizo croûts, a little heat in them. These are lentilles du puits, which are French lentils, green ones. I'm hoping they'll cook faster because they've already softened up. So I don't want to cook them in this uh, soaking liquid. No. They're very pretty, very mossy colored. I think we should really eat a lot more legumes because they're inexpensive, they go a long way, but they're such great food value and they cost nothing. Adding two bay leaves and of course an onion, just an aromatic base. And the other thing I'm going to add is chicken stock. Water is just as good and cheaper. So I'm just going to simmer them until everything is nice and soft and tender and then whiz it up. Meanwhile, I have a little project because a friend of mine has a birthday coming up and I love making my own cards. They're also a lot less expensive than buying them and way more fun, much more personal. By moi. <laughs> ah! In the time it takes to make a birthday card, you can cook a lentil. The bay leaf has done its thing, but I'm leaving the carrots and onions in. You could leave them whole if you want to pull them out, but I just like to puree them right in with the whole soup. <sighs> Bringing in the heavy equipment. All right. There we go. Ladle. Now, don't put too much in because it's hot and it needs lots of room so it doesn't explode the blender. You can crack the glass if you've got it too hot or if you've got too much. Ah! 
Getting very friendly with my appliances. I'm just going to thin this out with a little bit of water, not cream, because cream thins out taste too much for a soup like this. And I want it very earthy tasting. Refined in texture only. So just enough. And then it gets gently reheated. And you can put some parsley on it or, even better, little thin chorizo croutes, which are just slices of chorizo that you fry. And they have a little bit of heat and they go on top. A little bit of meat for the lentils. These are tiny chorizos. And I just need a few thin slices. Just heating a little oil. I'm sure these are fat enough, but just in case. Polka dots. Now a bowl. Nice and thick. And then, a few of these pretty little chorizo croutes on top. Cheerier by the minute. It's a beautiful soup because it's very earthy and thick, but then on top you get these fiery orange chorizo -y oil swirls and then these nice crisp croots. Mm. Hot and delicious. Next, the humble onion gets royal treatment. making all cheap French food because it's not all truffles and foie gras and champagne. There are lots of things that cost nothing, but nothing beats this. Whole baked onions, slowly, slowly cooked so that inside they're applesauce soft and they're delicious. I need a hot oven. So first the onions. Just cut off the end because you want them to stand up and leave the skins on because they'll be like little jackets. So this is just coarse salt and you make little mounds and it's really just to hold up the onions. So set the onions on top, one on each pile of snowy crystals. And then because of the skins bursting, just like with baked apples, give them a book. Just lets the steam out. Those need 15 minutes, and then I turn the heat down and they cook for an hour and a half, slowly, slowly, until they're just soft. So, a little vinaigrette has a yolk in it, just a little bit of garlic. This is tarragon vinegar, just like a teaspoon. So whisk that first, you could add mustard if you want to. And salt, just a pinch. This is all about balancing salt and acidity to get the taste right. And then, this is grapeseed oil. I don't want really strong olive oil for this. The onions are mild and I want to taste them. So just drop by drop at first so it emulsifies. Add grapeseed oil or peanut oil, whatever. Just for taste, because I love it. A little squirt. Now to that, some herbs. I think I'll have some thyme again, and tarragon. Very pretty. Done, and they smell so great, just caramelized scented, very sweet. And the 
Look how cute. A little onion house with this sauce all around it and then peeking through and you can pour more in there and it's all nice and hot and saucy inside. So you just have to slit down in. Now it's a conversation piece too. I think of everything. And dig into this soft oniony flesh with nice acidic herbal vinaigrette. And that cost how many cents? It's delicious. Mmm. I've made a spinach souffle, all puffed up and high and cloudy. I've made buckwheat crepes, nice and dark and nutty tasting, with tomatoes in cream and butter. I've made a lentil soup with crisp hot chorizo crudes all over top. And these beautiful baked onions with herb vinaigrette.